AP Environmental Science video, AP Environmental Science video, AP Environmental Science video. Come on, I know you love that theme song. This is Mr. Balsiger. This is a free response question number one on page 51 of your textbook. I was going to review it, so pause the video now and then go turn to page 51 in your book and then check it out as we move through it. So the question is pretty complex. The atomic number of uranium-235 is 92. Its half-life is 704 million years, and the radioactive decay of one kilogram of uranium-235 um, releases 6.7 times 10 to the 13 joules. That's a lot of energy. So this is one equality. Radioactive material must be stored in a safe container or buried deep underground until its radiation output drops to a safe level. Generally, it's considered safe after 10 half-lives. So here's A. A says, assume that a nuclear power plant can convert energy from uranium-235 into electricity with an efficiency of 35%. Um, so you think about the uranium inside of the power plant. This is my power plant. You've seen pictures of, of power plants before, and they have these huge stacks with these uh, plumes coming out of them. So it says it can take uranium-235 uh, and turn it into energy at a efficiency of 35%. Or if you ever want to use a percent, you could say we say that's 0.35 of the original value. The electrical transmission lines operate at 90%. So now we have the power lines. Well, that's not looking as good as I thought it would. But the power lines that go from the power plant and supply it to the cities operates at 90%. So you're losing some of the energy. You've heard it crackling and through those lines. And then um, from there, it says that the fluorescent light bulbs that are ran on this operate at an energy efficiency. This is my fluorescent light bulb, in case you're wondering what I'm drawing, of 22%. So we have 0.9. That's, that's what 90% is, 0 0.90, 0 0.22. So here are our three energy conversions. Um, I says, what is the overall efficiency of converting the energy of uranium-235 into a fluorescent light? Well, you have to consider all three deductions. The first one here, the second one, here and the third one here. So one way to figure out what these percentages equal is just turn them into a word problem. What is 90% of 35%? So the first thing we want to do is I'm going to take 35%. I'm going to say what is 90% of that? Now that's uh, an interesting way to set it up. Um, well, 0 times 5 and 0 times 3, that's going to be 0. So then my next line, I'm going to put 9. 9 times 5 is 45. I'm going to put a 0 here because I'm on the next line down. Um, and then um, I'm going to put the 4 up here. 9 times 3 is 27. Don't forget to add the 4. So that's 31. Now the trick with doing uh, multiplication with decimals is to figure out what the answer is, you would want to, once I add all these together, 0 plus 0 is 0 you figure out how many decimal points there were, how many decimal numbers there were. So because I multiplied by four um, decimal numbers, I'm going to move the decimal place over uh, four times. And I'm going to end up with a number of uh, 0 0.3150 is my answer there. That was kind of tricky. That's a tricky long division math. But we have our first conversion. Now, we're going to take that number, and we know that because um, 22 
percent efficiency with the fluorescent light. So I'm going to take 0 0.315 and I'm going to multiply by um, 0 0.22 um, which is our next percentage. So I'm going to say 2 times 5 is 10. I'm going to carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus that 1 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Alright, so I'm going to go to the next uh, next one down. So I'm multiplying in the one spot here so I can just keep the ones there. But here I'm multiplying in the 10 spot. So I'm going to put a 0 here so I can start here. 2 times 5 is 10. So I'm going to put the 0 here and I'm going to put a 1 up here. 2 times 1 is 2, but I can't forget to add that 1 on there. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. And then 2 times 3 is 6. So now I've got my um, answer here. I'm going to add up the ones. That's zero. I'm going to add up the tens. That's three. I'm going to add up the hundreds. That's nine. And I'm going to pull that six down there. Now our answer is uh, 6,930. But don't forget, figure out how many decimals you have here. Count them up. There's three decimals there. There's two decimals here. So I need to move the decimal place over five positions. Oh, I just wrote off the screen. Five. So I'm going to go, where's my cursor? Here's where it is now. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. I have to add a zero and put a zero. So it's 0 0.06930. Or we could say that that is 6.9%. That is our answer for I. Let's think about II. II says... How much energy from one kilogram of uranium-235 is converted into fluorescent light? So one kilogram of uh, uranium-235, how much light? Well, we, we just solved, if you think back, we just solved that we know it's only 6.9% 6 6 efficient. Or you could say we can multiply something by 0 0.069. That was our value up here to figure that out. So let's go back up. I think we had an equality at the very top here. We had uh, 1 kilogram, which was given to us, creates 6.7 times 10 to the 13 joules. So let's go down and use that. Write it down before it falls out of my head. One kilogram of uranium-235 produces 6.7 times 10 to the 13 joules. Is that right? Yep, that looks good. So we, if we have one kilogram, this question is all set up for us. All we have to do is figure out what 6.9% um, of this value is. To make it easier, I'm going to put my percentage into um, scientific notation, minus 1, minus 2. So I'm going to say 6.9 times 10 to the negative 2. And um, I got that by taking the decimal, and I had to move it over to the negative 2 spot. Now this is pretty difficult, so I'm going to split it into two steps. I'm going to worry about the exponents later. And I'm just going to take 6.7 and multiply it by uh, 6.9 for now. So 6.7 times 6.9. The first thing I'm going to do is the 9. So I'm going to take 9 times 7, which is 63. I'm going to carry the 6. So I'm going to go 6 times 9 is 54. Um, but I can't forget to add the 6 in later. So 54 plus 6 is 60. Now I'm going to take care of the 6. The 6 is in the 10 spot, so I'm going to put this placeholder 0. Whoa. Whoa. And then I'm going to say 6 times 7 is 42. And then um, I need to remember that I have the 4, so I'm going to put the 4 above the 6. Remember to add that in. So 6 times 7 is 42. I put the 2 down top, 4 up. 2 down below, 4 up top. 6 times 6 is 36, but I have to add this 4 to it, so that actually makes it 40. So now, when I add these together, 3 plus 0, 0 plus 2, 6 plus 0, 
and then the 4. So then the last thing I need to take into consideration is the fact that I have two decimal numbers here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my decimal place over two spots. So my answer is 46.23, but now we have to add in the exponents. Um, when we uh, multiply exponents, um, we actually add them together, the exponent value. So, um, and I will do another math talk on this, but 10 to the 13th times 10 to the negative 2 is actually going to be uh, 10 to the 11th. So the answer is 46.23 times 10 to the 11. So moving the decimal over one place is making the number appear smaller, so we need to add an exponent. So this would be 4.623 times 10 to the 12th. Now I realize there's a lot of different layers here going on, and so I wanted to make sure you know that I intend on doing a series of math videos on long multiplication with carrying, with decimals, and also uh, uh, math videos on multiplying and dividing exponents and how you add and subtract those. So if you didn't follow some of those details, this is a pretty sophisticated example. Asks you to figure out a way to conserve overall efficiency of energy. So you think about those huge plumes uh, releasing uh, stuff into the atmosphere. Maybe at the power plant a suggestion might be um, capturing some of the heat um, and transforming that into energy. You think about the power lines extending from here and uh, feeding the city, you could think about those are 90% efficient, they're pretty efficient, but you could say um, improve uh, conductivity um, in the wires or um, Perhaps a third option is if these fluorescent lights um, are only, that's supposed to be a light bulb, 22% efficient, you could have said um, use uh, more efficient light bulbs and right now we're coming out with these LED lights that are even more efficient than fluorescent lights, I think. Uh, so any of those answers would have been fine for three. You could talk about capturing some more heat energy at a power plant, improving conductivity of the wires, or 22% um, efficiency of lights. How can we improve that? That would be another way. And then the last part of this free response question um, was also kind of uh, a monster. But you could go back in the, in the book. It wants the first and second laws of thermodynamics and to explain them. The first law is energy cannot be um, created or destroyed. And so this allows us to take the energy from the uranium and turn on lights. The second one is when you use energy, you change it um, to a less usable form. And you think about you know the energy efficiency loss uh, as you use it to turn on the light bulb. That electricity was originally in the uranium and uh, was powering a power plant. So uh, these, uh, the idea that using energy turns it into a less usable form. So that is free response question. I hope that wasn't too long. I hope it was comprehensible. See you in class.